Hello, my name is Salam and welcome to this second video related to the Shape Diver component into the Grasshopper interface. In this exercise I will show you how to incorporate our Grasshopper final definitions into the Shape Diver interface related to how to control all these sliders, custom colors and shaders in order to present to the final clients or design professors or teachers. I will start to show this exercise, which consists in a truncate and twisted tower, which was made into the Rhinoceros uh, 3D modeling tool and was generated from a Grasshopper script. Okay, so this script depends on three profiles. Uh, these three profiles are inserted in this, uh, in this geom component. All the sliders that I need to incorporate inside the Shape Diver interface uh, are here, and are the final sliders and the final controllers that uh, Shape Diver will read and in will incorporate inside his interface. The items that uh, I have right now turned on are black and white color, as you can see here. Uh, I'm able to change the form of the tower. So this is just a lofting uh, for finding process in order to get a more accurate form to present to our client. At the final, the clients will be decide uh, which form will be developed to the construction and the contractor process. Okay, so I will change at first instance this form with the first profile. So I will show you how it's working. So this is my second profile right now that uh, has generated this form. I can change the main profile to so the first one, for example, and the tower will change his form automatically. We need to wait this process, the tower is generated with the first profile form. So this is just a lineal or polyline finding form. And the first one that I showed you before was a circular form. And the third form that we have right now on this uh, third profile is a more irregular bound curve, which will generate this third form. Okay, so at the final step, we will present uh, the three forms to our clients and the clients will decide which one will develop. Uh, I will turn on right now all these uh, components and all these custom preview components inside the Grasshopper interface just to show the profiles uh, that currently are generated all the final geometry that I showed you before. So this is the first profile, which consists in a polyline curve, okay? And from this polyline comes uh, the floor's height and the floor's, the floor's number, and the rotation value of the tower, the top scale factor, bottom scale factor, curve radius, etc. Okay, so we are able uh, to decide if the final glasses will be a single or double curvature glass panels. Okay. Uh, another item that we can modify as well uh, will be the uh, panel numbers between the number of the columns and the horizontal moulins diameter. Uh, I will turn off these profiles. I will change to the initial form, to the second profile generator, polyline. And I will turn on one more time the final shaders and the final custom previews in order to see the final geometry which has been generated inside this grasshopper definition. We need to we need to insist uh, which one of these components will be presented at the Shape Diver web platform interface to be sure that it works uh, nice and good. Uh, I will right now change the number of columns. Maybe uh, I can change the number of the columns to. Uh, 10 columns, for example, and the script will modify the final represented geometry. Uh, I can change, uh, for example, the curve radius 
and the top scale factor, for example, 2.16. And I can see the real time change inside the geometry. Okay, when we are sure that uh, this geometry uh, will be implemented in the into the Shape Diver platform, uh, the only thing that we need to do right now is just be sure that uh, the final geometry that we 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 wish to show. Uh, is actually uh, turned on on this custom preview component inside the Grasshopper, and which sliders uh, we will export into the Shape Diver interface. Okay, so uh, I will uh, save this uh, script right now. Saved, and when I save it, uh, the only thing that I need to do right now is just close uh, Rhinoceros and close Grasshopper as well. So I will uh, close this. Uh, this file, okay. Uh, I'm going right now to the Shape Diver web interface. Uh, I'm logging right now, so I am registered right now here with my Shape Diver account. Uh, I will go to the Upload tab, okay. I will import the final Grasshopper that I did before into this interface. So we have two ways to do it. And the first one is just click inside this rectangle and search for the file for example i have my file inside the desktop or then the another thing that we can do is just uh, find this grasshopper file and just drag into this interface okay the script will be uploaded automatically and the next thing that we need to do is just put a title for example uh, i will put uh, this title Uh, we need to put a description, so I have my description file uh, on a notepad file, so I will just copy this text and paste into the description, into the description rectangle, and we are able to put here the tags. So, for example, I can put a grasshopper as tag number one, um, Grid, for example, tower, and whatever that I want to uh, to know here. Uh, I can make this model private, or I can make this model public. Just making turn off on this option. So in this case, I will make my model private. I will go to the publish tab. I'm, I'm gonna to make a click here. Uh, the model will be uploaded and the Shape Diver interface is processing right now our model is done and the next step that we need to do is just define which sliders we need to represent and will be modified by the final user I mean for example if we are going to present this project to our final client or just send the link to our final client or professor, we are able to control which slider or which controllers uh, can be modified by them. Uh, I will uh, explain just a little bit these sliders. As you can see here, these sliders correspond all the time with the grasshopper sliders that we be defined before inside the grasshopper interface and the Rhino interface. As you can see here, the form is preserved to the final one that we defined and we did in the grasshopper interface before. So I'm able to change, for example, the name of this uh, of this option. I'm able to change the position about uh, the sliders controls. So for example, in this tower, I will put uh, the first control of the profile form. So I will just click on these three lines and drag at the top on this interface. I can uh, hide or unhide uh, to be modified by the final user. So if 
this option is turned on, uh, this option will be modified by the final users. If this option is turned off, this option cannot be modified by the final user. In this case, I will turn on. I can edit, for example, the name of this uh, controller. I can change the name, for example, number one, and profile form generator. Uh, I can decide which profile uh, can I use for this first instance. For example, I will use at the first instance, the first profile, which consists on the polyline and lineal profile curve. I can change the rotation value as well and the name. The slab thickness, uh, maybe we can define it as uh, 15 centimeters, for example. I'm working right now with meters into the Grasshopper and the Rhino program. And we are able to change all the time these positions. So as you can see here, we can change uh, the colors as well. For example, my slab colors right now. If I'm going to zoom in into the form. So as you can see here, my slabs, my slabs colors are um, gray. I'm going to change to white, for example. And it works perfectly with this and with this form. Okay, so I've decided that I need uh, right now uh, maybe 15 columns, and I can define that the number of the panels, I mean the glass panels between each column is four, for example. Another option that I, I, will, I will like to change is the mullions color, so I can change to a uh, white color, for example, in order to present in a better way our design intention or purpose. Okay, so we are able to modify all these values. In this case, these are the final modifications that uh, I will do. Uh, another thing that we can change here, so I'm gonna to minimize this tab and open the viewer settings. When I open the view settings, I can change the default material color, for example, to, uh, to black. Uh, I can define the edge color of this geometry. For example, I will zoom on into the form. Um, if I kind of turn on the edge, I can see the edge in the final geometry. I can define the edge color by object because each color and each object was defined into the Grasshopper plugin. Uh, and I can change the edge color, for example. In this case, uh, I'm gonna uh, to turn off the ground plane because I don't want to represent and the grid. I want to preserve this grid as you can see here in gray color. And the background color, I prefer to change it into a black color, for example. And the point side, I can increase, for example, uh, to zero. I'm able to set a top view for this model. In this case, I don't want to make it. The static controls uh, allows me have static controls. It means that I cannot modify all these uh, controller controllers which comes from Grasshopper final script. Uh, I can disable the zoom and the field of view, for example, I can change it. It means that I can change the perspective angle value. In this case, I will define as 35 degrees. The damping and uh, the rotation speed, zoom speed, and uh, the ambient light intensity as well. So I will decrease it right now. To show the viewport bounce, I can turn on the full screen mode. And I can just make a zoom in into this uh, tower just to see how it's looking. 
on how it looks for the final presentation. Okay, so I can amplify, for example, the pump amplitude. Uh, in this case, is one. I can decrease, for example, to 0.9 at the value, and the model will be updated. Okay, so in this case, for example, the first form that I want to present to our client and will be, for example, the third profile. The final client will decide which form he will use for construction purpose. Okay, so we are going to finish this uh, setup for this model and for uh, to do it, the only thing that we need to do is just uh, click inside these, uh, these tabs uh, to minimize and we will make a click into this option which uh, returns to this default view size page and the only thing that we need to do right now is just click and save. This final file and this final 3D model which was done into the Rhinoceros and Grasshopper interface is right now into the Shape Diver interface, which consists in a web interface, and the final client will be saying this 3D model when we are gonna to send to him this uh, embedded code, for example, which consists just a link that we can send via email or another way that uh, will be more easy for him and for us as well. Okay, so this is the second video that I did about the Shape Diver component. Uh, in this video, we have learned how to optimize and how to set up our 3D model, which can be defined into three forms. This kind of process can be implemented to the final presentations in order to make the correct decisions about the construction and the rationalization process in a form and can be optimized into the form that we need to have at the final step for construction, contractors, or just a static process design. I hope that this video will be useful for you and don't forget to uh, subscribe to this channel to get all the updated and all the videos that I will upload to the next times. If you have any questions about it, please let me know at the bottom of this video in the comment box and I will be answering your questions if you have. So see you in the next time. Bye.